Hey everyone, it's Becky from Book Obsessed Becky. I am coming at you with a used book haul. I started collecting these books probably um, in the like late fall, early winter, up until maybe last week. And you can see they're stacked here, they're on a table. Um, let me get situated, sorry. So I'm gonna try to be really quick and I'm not gonna read the blurbs on the back word for word, um, but Hopefully you can find something among all of these books that might interest you. I think I've got 19 books here maybe. And I would say I probably spent around 25 or $30. Some of these books are from a used library book sale. Some of them are from Goodwill. And some of them are from another um, like consignment shop that I go to. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about a lot of them and some of them are newer titles, popular authors. So let's dive in. Okay, so the first two I'm going to talk about are right here on the top and they're both by Margaret Atwood. Um, we've got Wilderness Tips, which I've never heard of this book. And first of all, I have to say the only Margaret Atwood book I've ever read is The Handmaid's Tale. and that book was infuriating and I loved it and I have the next book um, I think it's called the testaments but I haven't gotten around to reading it yet so I'm fairly new to Margaret Atwood but a quick little blurb on wilderness tips it says here are brilliantly rendered stories that explore themes of loss and discovery of the gap between youthful dreams and mature reality of how we connect with others and with the sometimes hidden parts of ourselves. So yeah, I'm excited about this book. Um, I mean, you could tell it's older because, you know, the yellowing or whatever, but that doesn't bother me. It's, a, it's got a little bend here in the back on the back flat, but again, not a big deal. The next Margaret Atwood book I have here is Life Before Man. This is what it looks like. And it says, couples whose, li couples whose loveless lives are tied to each other into an unstoppable chain of events that is slowly shattering them to pieces, leaving only strangers, survivors. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, this one is a bit beat up as well, but again, I don't mind because it's an older book, but you can kind of see like on the back, it's got some like wear on it and kind of on the front cover but again not a big deal got the yellowing again okay then we're moving on to a Debbie Maycumber book I love Debbie Maycumber I've said that in other videos as well and it is called The Courtship of Carol Summers this is what it looks like there's a glare because my window so I apologize for that. Um, it's about a single mom. She has a teenage son named Peter. She's a nurse and she's happy with her life. Peter suggests one day out of the blue that she start dating and he has it in his head that her and Alex would make a great pair. Alex is the father of Peter's best friend and um, she's not sure that she's ready for dating but that doesn't deter Alex at all. He is all in and willing to wait. So yeah I'm excited to see what that book is all about I've like I said I've enjoyed every book that I've read by her um so yeah Debbie Maycumber okay this one I'm not really going to talk too much about because it is a Christmas book and I don't want to know anything about it until next Christmas season but I figured I'd show it here because it was part of the haul it's called Christmas Camp and I guess it's going to be a movie or it's already a movie. I'm not really sure. But I'm excited to pick it up next winter season. Definitely not a spring read for me. Okay. This book I picked up because of Oprah talking about his other book, The Covenant of Water, which I still haven't read. I'm waiting for warm weather for that. Um, and it is called Cutting for Stone. This is what it looks like. And... It says here, well, I'm trying to find it, that Cutting for Stone is an unforgettable story of love and betrayal, medicine and ordinary miracles, and two brothers whose fates are forever intertwined. 
I think that sounds fantastic. Um, I'm definitely going to read the Covenant of Water first, but hopefully I get to this soon. I mean, it's a bit of a chunker, but that's okay. It does have this, which if you know, you know. Okay. This was another book that I had gotten. Um, I've never heard of this book. It's called Miss Julia Speaks Her Mind. That's what it looks like. And I'm going to read the back of the blurb for this one. It says, Miss Julia, a recently bereaved and newly wealthy widow, is only slightly bemused when one Hazel Marie Puckett appears at her door with a youngster in tow and unceremoniously announces that the child is the son of Miss Julia's late husband. Suddenly, this longtime church member and pillar of her small southern community finds herself in the center of an unseemingly scandal and the guardian of a nine-year-old whose mere presence turns her life upside down. With razor-sharp wit and perfect steel magnolia poise, Miss Julia speaks her mind indeed about a robbery, a kidnapping, and the other disgraceful events that her husband's, that happened because of her husband's death. Fast-paced and charming with a sure sense of comic tra- Wow, not trauma drama, comic drama, a cast of crazy characters in a strong southern cadence, Miss Julia speaks her mind with delight and will delight readers from the first page to the last. Holy, did I stumble through that or what? I think so, but I think this sounds fantastic and it's kind of, I don't know, kind of like a retro-y type cover, I think. Anyways, I'm pumped for it. Okay, so this book I got last weekend and I got it at Goodwill and I'm very excited about it. It says on the back, I don't even know what the book is about, but it said that if you love the Chronicles of Narnia, you will love this book. Apparently it's a series. It is called Wildwood and I love this cover. I think it is so cozy and I love like these pages. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like where the um, pages are kind of like cut. You know what I mean? They're not smooth. Like how this one is smooth. They're like rough. Anyways, um, when it talked about Narnia, I was like, yeah, I'm sold because I love Narnia. When I was looking through the book, hopefully this isn't a spoiler. Couldn't tell you, but they have little drawings in there as well, which I really liked. And, um, checking to see if there's a map because I can't remember if there was or not. Yes, there is. There's a little map. It's a children's book, but I'm game for children's books. Um, I'm game pretty much for any type of book. Well, with the exception of, you know, horror and super steamy. But yeah, so Wildwood. Has anybody ever heard of this? Because I've never heard of it, but I'm very excited about it. Okay. This one, I've never read anything by this author, but I know she's got some shows out or movies out or something along those lines. Um, and I do have some of her books on my shelf. I just haven't gotten to them yet. And that is The Husband's Secret. Again, I don't know anything about this. It just says, imagine your husband wrote you a letter to be opened after his death. Imagine too that the letter contains his deepest, darkest secret something with the potential to destroy not only the life you have built together, but the lives of others as well. And then imagine that you stumble across the letter while your husband's still very much alive. Uh, yes, please. It sounds fantastic. Okay, here's another one. I picked this book up because I have read another book by her and I think it's called, well, I don't see it on my shelf. I want to say it's called Georgie All Along. I think that's the same author. It's called Love Lettering. And yeah, I'm excited about this. It says on the back, um, it's a warm, witty romance. And this woman named Meg, she's got hand lettering skills that have made her famous as a planner of Park Slope, designing custom journals for her New York City clientele. She has another skill too, reading signs that other people miss. Knowing the upcoming marriage of Reed and his polished, gorgeous fiance, um, 
was doomed to fail is one thing, but weaving a secret word of warning into their wedding program is another. Meg may have thought no one would spot it, but she hadn't counted on the sharp-eyed, pattern-loving Reed. A year later, Reed has tracked Meg down to find out how she knew that his planned future was about to implode, but with a looming deadline and a bad case of creative block, Meg doesn't have time for Reed's questions unless he can help her find the, her missing inspiration. As they gradually open to each other, both try to ignore a deepening connection between them, but the signs are there, irresistible, indisputable, urging Meg to head the messages, to heed the messages Reed is sending her before it's too late. So this book cost me $2.99. I've read a book by this author before that I really enjoyed. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try. And I think it sounds great. Okay, Elizabeth Strout is an author I've never read. I have a couple of her books on my shelf. I'll eventually get to it. If you're a reader in a book quarter, you know the problem. You collect the books. You don't have all the time to read the books, but you love the books and you're gonna eventually get to the books. That's kind of how I am with Elizabeth Strout. So this is the book I picked up by her. And I think it sounds great. It says haunted by the freak accident that killed their father when they were children, Jim and Bob escaped from their main hometown of Shirley Falls for New York City as soon as they possibly could. Jim, a successful corporate lawyer, has, has belittled his big-hearted brother their whole lives, and Bob, a legal aid attorney who idolizes Jim, has always taken it in stride, but their long-standing dynamic is upended when their sister Susan... Susan, the Burgess's sibling, who stayed behind, urgently calls them home, where the long-buried tensions that have shaped and shadowed the brothers' relationship begin to surface in unexpected ways that will change them forever. Yes, it's a coming home type novel, and it takes place in Maine and New York, so I'm excited for this. I hope it's not like a, a book in a series, like further in the series. Like I said, I don't know very much about this author and how she writes, so I'm going to give it a go anyways. Okay, I picked this book up last weekend, and I read her, her book um, called The Bookish Life of Nina Hill, so I loved that book. Um, I listened to it on audio last summer, I think it was. So when I saw this one, I was like, I don't care what it's about, I'm getting it. And it's called, I was told it would get easier. And it's by Abby Waxman. Okay, so it says on the back, a little blurb about it. Stuck on a bus full of strangers, mother and daughter duo, Jessica and Emily Bernstein, watch their carefully mapped out college tour devolve into something they never expected in this hilarious, insightful new novel from the author of The Bookish Life of Nina Hill. That's all I need to know. I just need to know that she wrote the other book that I loved and I'm willing to give it a go. So that's how I ended up with this one. A while ago, um, cause I am well, a member of book of the month, like I've been getting their books for years. I spotted this one and I was like, Oh, I don't know if I want to waste my credit on this. Cause I'm not sure if it's one that I'm going to like. And there was another book that I was more interested in at the time, but I found it at the secondhand store and it is called women or woman of light. And that cover is beautiful. So I looked on Book of the Month to see what it says because um, if you're a Book of the Month member you, you know that they give like a quick little blurb about what the book is about and like some things that you should know about it. So it said it's epic, it's an epic intimate story that shows three generations of women trying to make a life in the perilous 30s American West. And some good, th and some things to know about this book or good to know about this book is it covers social issues it has lgbtq plus themes in it there's a slow build and there's graphic violence so yeah and i mean the woman on this cover look she's got a little baby strapped to her like i want to know what's up with that and it only cost me three dollars so definitely worth the shot on it oh my hair is driving me crazy okay I've never read anything by this author, um, but I picked it up last weekend. It's called Present Over Perfect by Shauna Quest, um, and it's a hardcover, and I think it cost me maybe a dollar. Um, it says, a story of a woman who knows all too well that settling feeling. 
Over the course of a few years, she has learned a new way to live, marked by grace, love, rest, play, and it is changing everything. This book is an invitation to learn about the journey she took to a better life. So I'm always interested in how people live and how they um, slow down to enjoy more of their life rather than just rushing and busy, busy, busy. Because I don't, I don't know, I don't feel like that's any way to live. So I was interested in her journey. That's the reason why I picked that one up. This one I got at Goodwill. Um, I think it cost me... I think this one was two dollars it's by kate morton and i have read the lake house by her and i absolutely loved it it's called the forgotten garden and i love the cover so it says a tiny girl abandoned on a ship headed for australia in 1913 she arrives completely alone with nothing but a small suitcase containing a few clothes and a single book a beautiful volume of fairy tales she's taken in by the dock master and his wife and raised as their own on her 21st birthday they tell her the truth and Nell sets out to trace her real identity. Her quest leads her to the Blackhurst Manor on the Cornish coast and the secrets of the doomed Mount Ratchet family. But it is not until her granddaughter Cassandra takes up the search after Nell's death that all the pieces of the puzzle are assembled. A spellbinding tale of mystery and self-discovery, the Forgotten Garden, will take hold of your imagination and never let go. I loved the lake house and how it bounced from um, past to present and present to past and like there was a mystery in there to solve and I think that Kate Morton tends to write like that where you've got both past and present and there's always some kind of a mystery which I really like um, and again it's a beautiful cover. Alright so I have got three books here by one of my favorite authors. I got it at the library book sale that I told you about. Um, and at that sale, the whole thing was they didn't charge individually for the books, but you could get a, like a bag of books or as many books as you want and then donate a certain amount. So that's how I ended up getting these three. I mean, there's others in here that were part of the library book sale as well, but all right, enough about that. We're going to talk about Nora Roberts and three of her books. So the first one up is Hidden Riches, where it says Do not Donna, Dora Conroy has a passion for antiques and any other rarities she can acquire for her quaint Philadelphia shop. A seasoned dealer, she knows all the tricks of the trade, but she is unprepared for the deadly consequences when she purchases a few curiosities at an auction and unknowingly brings home a priceless cash that makes her the target of an international criminal. Oh, I'm pumped. I've never heard of this book. I've never read this book, obviously. And I can't wait to see what happens to Dora. Then we've got Whiskey Beach. This was a hardcover. It's a beautiful book. Um, and it says, I will read you the blurb from the inside because there's quite a bit going on. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> it says, for more than 300 years, Bluff House has sat above Whiskey Beach, guarding its shores and its secrets. To summer tourists, it's the crown jewel of the town's stunning scenery. To the residents of Whiskey Beach, it's landmark and legend. To Eli, it's home. A Boston lawyer. Eli is weathered in an intense year of public scrutiny and police investigation after being accused of murdering his soon-to-be ex-wife. And though there was never enough evidence to have him arrested, his reputation is in tatters as well as his soul. He needs sanctuary. He needs Bluff House. While Eli's beloved grandmother is in Boston recuperating from a nasty fall, Abra Walsh has cared for Bluff House among her other jobs as yoga instructor, jewelry maker, and massage therapist. She's a woman with an open heart and a wide embrace, and no one is safe from her special. Is safe from her special, some would say, overbearing brand of nurturing, including Eli. He begins to count on Abra, I think that's how you say her name, um, for far more than her cooking, cleaning, and massage skills, and starts to feel less like a victim and more like the kind of man who can finally solve the murder of his wife and clear his name. But Bluff House many mysteries are a siren call to someone intent on destroying Eli and reaping the rewards. He and Abra will become 
entangled in a centuries-old net of rumors and half-truths that could pull them under the thunderous waters of Whiskey Beach. Passion and obsession, humor and heart flow together in a novel about two people opening themselves up to the truth and to each other. So obviously there's a love story in here. There always is, but there's always so much more than just a love story. It always goes so much deeper than that, and I can't wait to see what happens. The last Nora Roberts I have here is Three Fates. And a quick little thing on this is, um, when the Lusitania sank, more than a thousand people died. One passenger who survived became a changed man, giving up his life as a petty thief. Though keeping the small silver statue he lifted, a family heirloom, to future generations, now nearly a century later, that statue, one of priceless, long-separated set of three, has been snatched from the Sullivans. And they will do anything to get the statue back. They don't care where they have to go. It's going to happen. They're going to they're gonna make the set complete again. And yeah, I'm stoked. Um, the next two, or the last two, hold on, I heard a car. I'm going to make sure nobody's pulled up because I'd be very embarrassed to sit here and record with somebody at the door, seeing how the door is right there. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. It was the neighbors. All right, what was I saying? Oh, the last two books I got are right here, and they are book of the month books. Um, and I think I paid just a couple of dollars for each of them and I'm very excited about them. So the circus train looks like this. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at it. It's so beautiful. Okay. Book of the month's quick little blurb that it gives says all the world's a stage in this moving World War II story about a traveling circus and finding your path in dark times. Some things that are good to know about this book is it's an inspirational story. It's got movie-ish like type qualities. It's international and there's an underdog going on. So has anybody read this? Because I'm excited for it. And the last one, I think I had seen it on, I want to say Lauren on the books channel, but I can't be a hundred percent. Anyways, it's called Honey Girl. And book of the month says, when a classic Virgo gets married spontaneously, she starts to re-examine her life and what she truly wants. Some things that are good to know about this book is that it has LGBTQ plus themes. It's quirky, it's millennial, and it's about female friendships. Yeah, I'm stoked. So, out of all of these books, I don't, I'm not going to hold them all up. There's just too many. <laughs> But out of all of these books, is there any of them that you have read? Is there any that you want to read? Um, what do you recommend I start with first? What are you all reading right now? I'm like interested to know. Like, let's have a conversation about it. Okay, so my dog is in the bedroom with my son and he's probably getting antsy and it's finally nice out. I always seem to talk about weather. But it's finally nice out. It's going to be in the 40s today, which where I am, that's, that's nice. Like spring is like coming and it's sunny out and it, I'm stoked to get outside. So I'm going to end the video here. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on these books and I will talk with you all very soon. Happy reading and stay cozy. Bye.